Hello and welcome to the first episode of the new Verbal to Visual podcast. I am your host, Doug Neal, and I'm excited to start sharing with you some coaching calls that I've been having all about sketchnoting. I've been making myself available for 30 minute chats with anyone who has picked up one of Verbal to Visual's sketchnoting courses or joined the Verbal to Visual community. In today's episode, you're going to hear Hari Subhash and I talk about how to sketch note faster with a particularly interesting setting in mind, creating instructional videos for customers of the software company that Hari works for. So you'll get to hear us chat about how best to use visuals to communicate complex ideas. And I think you'll find that the tips that I share on increasing your sketchnoting speed apply to plenty of other settings as well. So I hope you find those useful. You can find the show notes for today's episode at verbaltovisual.com slash one. Let's get into it. All right, Hari, good to be chatting with you today. Um, I thought a good place to start would be for you just to describe um, where you are in the world and kind of what you're up to and the role that you'd like sketchnoting to play in your work and or life. Sure. Thanks, Doug. Um, So I'm based out of Baltimore, Um, moved here. So we moved here about a year and a half back. Um, My work has been recently in developing uh, training content for a startup. So there is slightly technical um, startup which focuses on the big data space. So my role essentially is to create training material which helps explain their product to customers. So that's my entry point into this. So I've been looking at ways in the last, probably about the last six, seven months, um, looking at ways to um, make the content more approachable and interesting. So sketchnoting has been one way to um, do that for me. So um, that's one angle. The other is also I'm, because I'm also not as familiar with the space that the startup works in, I've also had to learn quite a bit. And um, sketchnoting has been useful um, for, um, and I've been doing that even without realizing I was doing sketch noting. So I'd been doing mm-hmm. something similar to sketch noting for about, you know, the last year and a half, two years, or even before that in different way, ways, but more consistently for that much time. Uh, and I only stumbled on the term probably a month and a half back. And since then, I've been taking the course and doing uh, some more stuff that you recommend doing. Nice. That's great to hear. Um, so I'm curious then, were you kind of like, uh, as a kid growing up, um, were you kind of like a doodler? Did you naturally weave kind of drawing and sketching into your notes kind of from the get-go? <laughs> so I definitely a doodler, but not for learning. So I would doodle, <laughs> doodle to waste time and because I wasn't paying attention in class, but not necessarily for learning. The, <laughs> The idea of using visual note-taking for um, learning is pretty recent for me. So although I was using it to teach people, so I've also been teaching people on the side for a while, um, for about four, five years, six years now. Um, And I was using sketchnoting to illustrate concepts um, to to an audience, but not for myself as much, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, even if you were doodling just for fun and to pass the time, uh, I think that still sets a nice foundation for uh, kind of what what has come next here for using it for yourself and also as a as a teaching tool. Yeah. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, which do you feel like digging into and exploring today as far as those kind of like two applications you mentioned? Um, on the one side, creating training content around a fairly like complex topic. And on the other, uh, it sounds like the way you've been using it on a more personal level to kind of learn about the startup space. Yeah. Um, so I think even sort of exploring my process would be helpful just yeah. to maybe I can talk you through how I approach sketch noting. Um, my main, um, you know, thinking around this is, you know, I'm very process oriented in terms of, Hey, like here's, Here's the way I do a particular thing. How I, how can I improve it to make it you know faster, more effective, blah blah blah, um, so that I'm more efficient with my time. And that's something that I is at a premium for me these days because I have a lot of stuff that, that I need to get done and do it quickly. Um, so I'm really trying to get that uh, the art of sketch noting sort of nailed down in a way that it's more um, much faster. That's my I guess my key um, stumbling block right now is that it takes me a while to make a sketch mm. note. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
so I also so the 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 thing that's been really useful on that front has been the act of doing those sketch notes illustrates concepts better to me, um, so that I'm then able to explain them better and then use that sketch note itself as a way to create new content, right? So it's sort of I get multiple users out of that sketch note, um, which is good, but I'm still looking at ways in which I could improve um, and make it faster. Um, so maybe we could talk through that to get a sense for if you have any tips for improving my speed. Yeah, I think that's a great uh, focus to our conversation today. And um, I think I, I too come at sketch noting from a very like process oriented standpoint. Um, so I think we're pretty aligned there. And um, I know that the uh, particular goal that you have of kind of improving the speed um, of your sketch noting, I know that that's one that um, a lot of other sketch noters would love to be able to um, achieve that as well. So I think that folks listening will um, enjoy uh, us explore how how to do that. Um, so yeah, maybe starting by kind of sharing what your process looks like right now. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll, we can go from there. Yeah. So uh, and just to maybe uh, set the stage a bit, the endpoint for usually these sketch notes is some sort of illustrated video. So a lot of the sketch nice. noting that I do is sort of like there's a flow to it. If you notice there are arrows pointing here and there and like, you know, sort of uh, almost looks like a concept map in a way that I'm walking people through a particular idea and then linking those concepts. So that's the, I guess, the sort of output from any of the sketch noting process that I go through. So, um, so say, for instance, if I was to talk through about my process, if I'm approaching a particular concept, which is usually one, maybe two, one or two concepts every week is my aim. Um, if I'm approaching, approaching a particular concept, I'm usually not as familiar with the topic as I want to be. So then I take, say, the first few, first day almost, um, working through that material. And I do, a, I think, probably about two or three iterations of a sketch note. Um, and the first one would be pretty rough. The second one, I would try and like fine tune a bit more. Uh, and the third one usually is the one that I would record. Um, and by record, I just do a visual rec recording, so a screen recording. And then after that, I do a voiceover on top of that. Um, so that's my overall process. And that takes me about you know two days to three days for a single concept. Um, what I would like to have is uh, to be able to do, uh, do it in one day. Now, obviously, there are some stumbling blocks which are not sketch note related, which is my own conceptual gaps, which I need to fill. Mm. So it's a question of how quickly can I learn. Um, and I've, I've been working on that process aspect also on the side. Um, and that's getting faster. But what I right. think um, right now, the my process really is to say, hey, like I do a sketch note and I think, okay, this icon or something else, or some sort of image would capture this concept pretty well. What I do is I um, go to the site that you recommended, Free Nouns, I think it's called, right? Um, mm. Maybe right. the noun project? Is it that one? Noun project, noun project, not free noun. Cool. Noun project, yeah. So I go to the noun project and I look for icons which uh, icons which sort of capture that. And then I try and mimic them as mm -hmm. best as I can um, while recording. Um, and that's, yeah, so usually that's my process um, mm. of going through like, hey, like, uh, and in terms of speed, the main stumbling block while making the sketch note obviously is the, um, is the drawing aspect of it. Um, so the way that I sometimes say, for instance, I couldn't draw a sideways hand in the, if you look at the, the one that I shared, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there's one which says, you know, there's a sideways hand with a shield on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, the sideways hand for, you know, I could not get it. So I spent about probably, you know, 30, 40 minutes just repeating that same mm -hmm. icon till I could nail it. That same sort of, it's obviously like there's a pattern to drawing certain things which I'm right. not as familiar with. Um, so, so yeah, that's my process. And I, I think part of the answer, I know myself and that it'll speed will come with practice. Um, but I was wondering if you had any other tips in terms of how to improve. 
Yeah, I think this is a great uh, question to explore here. And uh, just to give listeners a sense, um, Hari sent over uh, a sketch note to me, which I will um, share within the, the show notes of this episode, if, if Hari's cool with that. And uh, I'll, I'll talk through it a little bit um, while asking a couple of, of questions about it, because it's a well, well-organized sketch note. It looks great. Um, the, the title here is Reveal, an Overview. So so um, first, I'd like to hear Hari a little bit just about what the um, what reveal is, uh, and then also um, the tools that you use to create this sketch note. Yep. Oh yeah, I totally skipped out on the tools. Um, so reveal is so the the product that the company that I work for, uh, the startup. Theirs is a it's a database company, and their main sort of selling point of their technology is that they improve increase the speed at which uh, massive amounts of data can be ingested and then um, visualized or like some sort of analytics can be done on it. The reveal is a platform which is uh, the front end for that database, which allows users to quickly visualize their data. So say you have like a massive amount of data which is streaming in from you know some particular website or an application, quickly get that data into your database and then within seconds, visualize that data on a front end dashboard. So Reveal is a dashboard app. Um, so this piece that I'm working on, in fact, I'm working on it this week, um, also is, uh, um, is a course on how do you set up this dashboard? What are the main components? What does it do? Mm. Blah, blah, blah. And this is the first sketch note for that series um, or the first video, uh, which explains, uh, provides an overview of Reveal and what it does um, and how do you access it. Um, and one other key aspect, which is sort of emphasized here is the, the security of these dashboards, because a lot of these mm. are internally facing. So you don't want, a, a, you know, people who shouldn't be seeing some particular cuts of the data to be uh, given access to it. So I talk a bit about the security um, and then some of the key features um, that make it stand out against other competition. Um, so that's that's a broad idea for this um, sketch note to sort of nice. give an overview of of that platform. Yeah, and it's it's well organized just to describe it a little bit for folks, but you know, I do encourage folks to go check it out to look at the the image itself. I've I've realized too this is a one of the challenges about, you know, creating um an audio uh mm -hmm. storytelling tool around a visual subject. <laughs> uh but I think I still think it'll be it'll be fun and worthwhile. So, um uh, just a couple of things that stand out to me about this sketch note is that, you know, you've got a real clear headline there in that blue um, text color. I think that might be the only time you use blue as the text for your title of reveal and overview. But then for each of the kind of different sections of this sketch note, um, you, you're using purple for kind of the title of that section. And it's also highlighted in the background, which is really helpful to like, um, kind of manage and kind of work your way around the, the screen. And then within each of those sections, there's uh, at least one icon, if not a, a few icons and diagrams and uh, a little bit of text there too, just to kind of uh, describe what's going on. So as far as like the the elements of your, your sketch note, I feel like this looks clear and uh, is a great way to, to communicate what you're sharing, especially imagining it, you know, I'm looking at a static image here, mm -hmm. but I can imagine when you're screen recording and then coming through with your narration, um, how helpful it is to kind of see each of these pieces come up one at a time. Um, it looks like you used a digital tool to, to yes. create this. What, what tool was oh. that? Yes, yeah, so I so my setup right now is uh, I have a Wacom Intos Pro, which is what I use to make those notes, and I use um, Notability, which is a software on Mac, uh, note taking software on Mac, which which is not the best. I've, I'm yet to find a Mac compatible app, which is really good. So if you have any suggestions, that'd be great. Uh, but Notability is like a flexible note taking app. Um, and I use it to do most of my notes these days. And I pretty much use use that almost you know every every day um, for my work. Nice, nice. That's the great. Setup. 
I've actually just started using Notability um, on the iPad, mm. uh, which I've really been enjoying uh, coming from Procreate, which is a much yeah. more kind of like Illustrator based tool yes. to a, like a dedicated note taking app yep. um, that has like some great constraints to it. Um, yeah, so far I've been been enjoying it. There could be some differences to using it on a desktop yes, uh, with yeah. a Wacom. And for folks not familiar, like the, the Wacom tablets, most of them at least, you know, it's a, it's a tablet in front of you that isn't also a screen. So you're like drawing on this tablet, but then you look up at your desktop screen to see the marks that you're making. Um, I assume that's the case with, with your tablet. Yes. So I have a, um, so I have a um, MacBook, which is hooked onto a larger screen and also a Wacom tablet. So I, um, yeah, I draw on the tablet and I look onto the bigger screen. Nice. Um, cool. So I feel like that gives a pretty good picture of your, your setup, the tools you're using, um, why you're creating this. I feel like we've uh, got a good kind of foundation for, for what's going on as far as what you're using your, your sketch notes for. Um, so let's actually dig into the, the main question of like how to, how to increase the speed a little bit. Um, and I think you're spot on with what you've already mentioned in terms of, uh, you know, speed will come with practice. Um, and I think that happens in a couple of ways. One uh, practice being like the more times you draw, for example, like uh, a hand, a horizontal hand, like reaching out, like the more times you draw that, the quicker you will um, be able to do it. Um, but then also like each time that you draw something entirely new, that's kind of a new element that you've added to your visual vocabulary so that, you know, the next time, or maybe after the second or third time, you won't even have to go into the noun project to look for one. You'll kind of have that, and you'll be able to um, pull it in uh, into your sketch note more more quickly. Uh, and this also kind of reminds me of a conversation that we've been having within the verbal to visual community. Right now, we're um, in a monthly theme of build your visual vocabulary. And uh, I posed the, the question because I was curious to know if folks um, intentionally store their visual vocabulary somewhere, mm. if they have like a dedicated notebook for their icons or if they're doing it digitally, if they have a folder somewhere or something like that. Mm. And I think one of the uh, responses that stood out to me was from someone who doesn't have a dedicated storage space, but made the point that like he he practices, I think this was Sean, I'll double check this, but he, he practices um, his visual vocabulary until it's in his muscle memory. And like what, once it's in your mus muscle memory, that's kind of like all the storage you need. Um, so that might be a, a helpful thing to keep in mind as you continue growing your visual vocabulary around these kind of like technical topics that, you know, it makes sense that for uh, a lot of these things, it will take a little bit of time to um, think about what might be the best icon or, or diagram to explain the, the process. Um, so that's like the first first angle on increasing speed. Uh, I am curious though about like there is something appealing as you mentioned about like what if what if we could go through this this process in a single day instead of it kind of stretching over yeah. a, a day or two. Um, and the the idea that you know, the, the task tends to expand into the time that you give it. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious here. And this is like, treat this as an experiment, like try giving yourself the constraint of like, you only have one day to make it and yeah. like, see, see what results and then compare like uh, a video that you make in one day to the videos that you've made over two or three days. And um, chances are, you know, the ones that you spend two or three days on, there might be like uh, some small things that make them a little bit better or a little bit clearer. Um, but you might find that it's not that much of a difference when you only give yourself a day um, and that it might be worth the, the time saved yeah. um, to, to do that as opposed to the extra whatever percent better or yeah. clearer you can make it over a couple of days. 
Um, yeah. And it's, my yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I would say it's it's inter interesting that you say that because I've uh, so before I came into sketch noting, so this is a problem that I have had before, even before this, um, and I, th I think I also got re I I watched a video about maybe it was from you about constraints, placing right kind of constraints around, and maybe that's part of the sketch noting thing. I think it's part of the video mm -hmm. um, or the course. Um, and you know, I had the same philosophy even before, where I was like, "Oh, I need to really force myself to." You know, obviously, your work expands. If you give yourself enough time, you'll just fill it up with, you know, making that icon exactly how it it looks, how you want it to look, instead of pay, probably paying attention to something else which needs more time. Um, so I was doing this earlier, and you are right in that. You know, I by placing that constraint, I just and this is not just not officially placed constraint. I had a deadline. And I had wasted a whole bunch of time making stupid videos when um, <laughs> I could have put, you know, I had to get content out. So then it came to a point where I really had to move fast. And then I ended up making these uh, stick figure animations. Uh, whereas <laughs> earlier I was making these elab, trying to make these elaborate sort of like videos. I started making these stick figure animations, which really worked out well. Um, <laughs> not necessarily a sketch note, but sort of like the if you've seen um, SKCD, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right? So that no style of animation where like, you know, two people are standing and talking and <laughs> you have these speech bubbles, very easy to make, but also really effective um, as a way to illustrate concepts. So you're right. And then, you know, forcing myself might be the best way to placing a constraint might be the best way to, you know, accelerate this. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I, I need to talk to my boss about it. She could advance my deadline and just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There you <laughs> go. I mean, that's, that, that's worth trying, I think. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I think what that um, provides almost is a, uh, while it is like an added layer of like <laughs> potential stress and a little bit of anxiety, mm -hmm. there's this this term that I has stuck in my brain from uh, teacher training days when I was on my path to become like a middle school and high school teacher, um, this term of facilitative anxiety yeah. that, you know, when there's time constraint around a task or um, a certain amount of pressure, if it's at the right level, you know, within the appropriate bounds, then it's facilitative in the sense that it can help you kind of generate new ideas yep. or approach it in a different way than if you had more time. Yep. Um, so that is kind of like the, the, the theory behind why that might um, result in some, some interesting things for you. Um, another idea that came up as I'm looking at your sketch note here is uh, you, and you might even be, be able to identify this already as you look back at the videos you've created. Um, how many of these have you made, by the way? I've probably made about 25, 30 videos now, I think, wow, or more. Nice. Yeah. That's, a, uh, yeah, but that's only, a lot. So sketchnoting, so this is my, I think this was the first time I used sketchnoting for those. So the other gotcha. ones I was still illustrating. So I would do some sort of other kind of, in fact, I had a similar process, but not as fine tuned. It was more focused on the flow, um, so not necessarily as much text content and iconography. I would usually sometimes just pull an icon from somewhere and just paste it onto the like animate it so that it appears, mm -hmm. uh, rather than drawing it myself. You know, so I, I would see. have a map icon. I would have some some other icon. Um, so I only started drawing after I started taking the course. Um, okay, nice, nice. That's kind of a cool. Um transition. And I think that's uh, one that, you know, other folks might be familiar with, you know, if they've been creating presentations in something yeah. like Keynote or PowerPoint and using the, um, what uh, my, my impression is fairly um, powerful kind of animation tools within that type of presentation platform. Yeah. But then like, okay, what if I kind of did all this hand sketch myself? Yeah. Um, so it's cool that you're going in that direction. Uh, and the, the thing that you might be on the lookout for is uh, <clears throat> it seems like you're already doing a, a good job of kind of like chunking up the sketch note into these different sections. And then within the video, you know, kind of flowing from one to the next, uh, you might try to start identifying um, kind of like a limited number of uh, visual formats for each of those chunks. So as we look at like uh, some of the specific sections, there's one that has a green check mark and the title of best four. Mm. And then, you know, you say it's best for single table dashboards, best for desktops, not mobile, best for straightforward workflows. And 
for each of those, you've got an icon associated yeah. with it. So it's this like helpful list, clear, short phrase, helpful visual reference. Um, so I would consider that, you know, uh, one format for a chunk like that, mm. uh, you know, a, a list with custom icons is kind of like the bullet points. Yep. Um, so that's one to keep in your mind that you might want to use in the future. Uh, but then another one, like maybe the, the easy to use section, um, where it looks like there's kind of like a, a plug and play and a, a diagram that one has a little bit more of like a diagram style mm. to it. Um, and then, you know, even the one with shareable data, uh, shareable dashboards, where there's that that hand with yep. the shield above it, there you're almost getting closer to like something more like a scene um, yep. that has you know more than just one visual element to it. Yep. So, like a simple scene could be another category. And my thought is that as you identify, uh, you know maybe five or six of those types of categories. It will depend on what you feel like works best for you. Yeah. Like that has the potential to speed up your decision-making process when yeah. you're first learning about these. And like when you're learning about it, you probably will be able to identify based on the, you know, structure of that individual chunk, which of those specific visual formats would fit best. Yeah. Um, how, how does that hit you? Yeah, I, th I think, yeah. Curve? Yeah, you've hit that on the nail because that's something I still, um, so I know that there's a, and you probably picked out the ones that I have a clear sort of, um, you know, the bullet, bullet point one, the, um, you know, the flow part, right? Hey, when I'm connecting different chunks, mm -hmm. um, I think all those are like things that I've sort of had in the past and I'm sort of working through that same pattern here, but in a sketch note way. Um, the pieces that still I'm, I guess, working on, for instance, if you notice it, it, the best with Connecticut rendered server sites, right? That that piece has two headings when it should be just mm. one heading, right? Gotcha. But yeah. how do I emphasize that rendered server side? Because that's an important point. Um, I could have done that using, say, um, black text with, say, some icon. Um, mm -hmm. So that's still like those are pieces that i'm still working through i'm trying to figure out what the best sort of visual format would be to communicate that effectively um yeah. but you're right in that like that's still not for me a good chunk right when i look at it i'm like oh it's uh, and also even the first piece which is like data exploration and below that it's inside discovery both of those are essentially bullet points what for mm. what should be under a heading right yeah um so you know that's still i guess that those are the pieces which hmm. It's helpful to have this conversation because it's sort of like, hey, okay, I can clearly identify that those are pieces that I already know is not working that well, but I'm just sort of stuck with it because you know I, I had to place a constraint on myself. In fact, For think, sure, right? Yeah. Um, one one thing uh, that you might experiment with, uh, especially with connected to that first piece that you were talking about um, on the rendered server side as almost like right now it's like a, a second heading to mm -hmm. like one, one section. Um, that might be a good thing to represent using uh, a container and even just like a, mm. a box a box around the maps and the scatter plots, uh, which you have visualized well there. Um, yeah. But literally just a box with the Something label of yeah. rendered server side, because that yeah. kind of communicates that, oh, that lives or that, that task is done within that space, server yeah. side as opposed to elsewhere. Um, and uh, I think... I heard you mention too, like that the use of containers um, uh, outside of the fact that you're already using headings really well, it doesn't look like there's any um, containers within any of those sections. So that could oh. be like a specific yep. sketch noting element that you might look for opportunities to, to incorporate where it makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a great idea. And that, thanks for that session. So it's something I definitely haven't used at all previously is also container. Like I, the only containerizing I've done so far is to sort of, sometimes I put a line in the middle to delineate one part of the sketch, like a piece that I'm working on from another, but not yeah. necessarily uh, containers around conceptual chunks, which I think is probably a much better way to capture a piece and mm. link pieces together. Um, Cause there's obviously some white space which separates content, but it's mm. useful to visually just separate that content out and emphasize that. You're right. Yeah. That could add something. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. 
um, especially when that uh, that that separation helps to communicate the idea itself, like yep. identifying where this the specific task lives. Um, uh, yeah, I could see that see that being helpful. So I feel like we've we've explored a handful of ideas here, and we're um, kind of getting close to the the half hour mark, which is a constraint that I've decided <laughs> to kind of place on these these coaching calls. Um, how how has that felt? Ari, in terms of giving giving you some ideas to to work with to to try to get at that increased speed without losing you know the the desired impact that you have with these. yes obviously like that is <laughs> something to keep in the forefront of of your mind as well um, do you feel like you have some ideas to run with yeah absolutely and I think I'm definitely going to try the containerizing piece and also yeah try to, to sort of figure out this issue of like having to use double headers, um, mm. which I don't really like. Um, so that might actually solve the problem for me. So that'll be great. Um, nice. Try out in the next, next few videos. That's um, great. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, the, uh, I feel like what, um, a, but hopefully helpful thing that came out of this conversation was like a couple of specific techniques like that. But then also, um, if you decide to take on that experiment of, uh, like giving yourself the constraint of a single day, um, mm. I'll be curious yeah. to hear, uh, what, what comes out of that. Uh, so I might, if you're, you're cool with it, I might reach out at some point in the future just to hear, um, how things go after you, you try out some of these things. Yeah, totally. Um, and I, you know, I, I definitely will have to use that constraint because there are deadlines coming up. So <laughs> there you go. Right. So, just right in with, uh, <laughs> stuff you gotta do. Yeah. So I'll definitely be uh, doing that soon. So, yeah. And I want to keep this format. So I want to use sketch mm. notes, maybe with some of the previous stuff that I also used to do with, uh, animations and things like that, you know, very crude uh, animations. I mean, very crude animations. Um, mm. but to combine that with sketch notes. So. For instance, how, how does this look with, say, a talking head? Uh, oh, like yeah. Right, a speech bubble person. Like, I'm not yeah. sure how to incorporate that into this um, yet. Right, So this mm -hmm. is one style of video making that I'm exploring right now. And I want to combine it with other stuff, which I feel are, has been effective in the past that I've done, uh, and incorporate those to have, like, a mixed, or maybe not. Maybe that, you know, it might be too much. Uh, <laughs> but I definitely want to experiment and see if that comes out well also. That's on my to-do list. Nice. I love I love that. I love that experimentation. Uh, I think what you've shared here, you're already off to a, a great start, uh, even kind of just having made that transition to starting to use sketchnoting elements. Um, and I'm a, a big fan of continuing to experiment with uh, different video formats and uh, different elements with talking heads and different visual styles and something that I try to experiment with as well. Um, Cause you never know when one of those small or large experiments might hit on something that ends up being really, really useful for you. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's great. Awesome. Well, Hari, thanks for this conversation. Uh, anything else you'd like to, to share before we sign off for today? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you for taking time off. I think you put out excellent content, which I have enjoyed watching. And I also really like watching your non sketch note content as well, um, mm. which is also that's how I stumbled onto the course, I think. Um, oh, no. I, what what was that? Just I remember curiosity. because I so I've been doing this, uh, you know, personal like process stuff around. It's focusing not necessarily on to do list, but on how I do things and how I can improve those things. And I think I was Googling something and I stumbled on a video that you made about something. Um, I forget. It was about like having these goals in the future. Mm -hmm. right? uh, I forget. It was, it, it was a while back that I stumbled on the video, but essentially yeah. like how do you set, set goals and which really align with right. what I, how I think about this and which is how I then, you know, it is usually how you end up subscribing to YouTube channels. And then I looked at the next video, next video, next video, and I was like, <laughs> oh, it's getting noting. What is this? And I'm, so that's how I ended up on the course. Um, and I'm still working through the course material. I still have a lot. So I'm only on the, I'm not even at the layout piece yet. So um, okay, cool. On the course. So still, still ways to go there. Great. Well, I hope that that continues to be a, a helpful way to think through things and continue building your skills. 
Um, I think that was probably, I think that video was titled um, just how to set goals. Uh, yeah. And it's, uh, I, I created this visual diagram representing an idea from Todd Henry um, from one of his books. Um, I, Todd Henry is a guy that I, I sketch note a lot. I enjoy his yeah. books and his podcasts. So I've got a handful of videos talking about his ideas. Um, so it sounds like that was uh, uh, maybe your, your entry point. So I'm glad that you, you found that one and, and found it to be useful. It's fun. Yeah. I feel like I go back and forth sometimes about like, uh, I really like representing other people's ideas using sketch notes and making videos about them. Uh, but then also, you know, making, um, just instructional videos about sketch noting. And it's weird to like sometimes be, be torn between uh, those two and feeling like I should only be doing one or the other, but uh, do you, it's okay to do both. Do you enjoy both or do you have a preference for either? One of those? Ooh, good question. I think it, it varies on, on the whole. I very much enjoy both. Um, and I do like having, uh, being able to spend time on both of those different uh, types of, of outlets. Um, yeah, I enjoy both. Sometimes I feel like it's one of those situations where, yeah, uh, when I'm working on one form of video, I'm like enticed by the other, yeah. uh, no matter which one it is. Right. So like, and I think that's part of how they can build on each other because when I'm, you know, uh, coming up with some like sketch note of an idea from a book that I'm reading. I, mm. I enjoy that, but that also gives me ideas like, Ooh, this, this makes me want to create a sketch noting lesson about this mm. topic. And then when I go to create the sketch noting lesson, as much as I enjoy that, I'm also like, okay, I'm, I'm happy to be making these sketch noting lessons, but now I want to get back to like learning new things and <laughs> using this lesson to yeah. apply myself to, to something that I'm learning. So there's a little bit of that going on, but yeah. um, I do enjoy both. That's definitely the growth mindset. You always sort of keep on, keep on learning new things, keep on doing new things. That's the, yeah. Well, it sounds like that's kind of the situation that you're in as well with the, the new things. Since you have to learn these concepts before yeah. you sketch note them, uh, yeah. I feel like you're in a you're in a pretty similar boat. Which is really exciting to me. The, that's the one thing that I really enjoy. But I didn't speak about earlier is with sketch noting. It's also it it is an artistic way to learn slightly difficult concepts, and I really mm. enjoy now even just sort of. Even if I'm learning something which you know um, I'm bored by, um, <laughs> sketch the act of sketch noting makes it more interesting. So I'm sort of like as excited about that topic just because oh now I can sketch note about it. I can like <laughs> you know, doodle about it, which is also makes it you know exciting and interesting. Which has been another you know a, um, a positive side effect of taking this on. It's been good. Yeah, I love that. I love that you pointed that out. Um, and I, I agree with you there. So uh, I hope that the folks listening also caught some ideas or two to experiment with and uh, lots of uh, good good energy and excitement coming from you, Hari. So that definitely came through on this call and I, I appreciate that. Um, so thanks again for uh, having this conversation. Yeah, thank you, Doug. And thanks for all the content out there that you put out. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. I hope that you enjoyed that conversation between Hari and I. I like that we hit on that piece of being able to build up your sketchnoting process one piece at a time. It doesn't have to start out as this super complex or super artistic thing. You can start with something simple like a flowchart with icons and short phrases and then build out from there. And as you build out, you can keep in mind these categories, specific types of ways you might visualize an idea so that as that information is coming in, you have a, a small set of options to choose from because that's what can help you make quicker decisions about how to sketch out any given idea. So I hope that our conversation gave you some ideas about what elements you might like to build into your sketchnoting process next and how you might speed up your own decision-making process. To see Hari's sketchnote that we were talking about, as well as some links to the resources that came up, check out the show notes to today's episode at verbaltovisual.com slash one. 
And from there, you can hop over to the courses tab or community tab if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper into the development of your sketchnoting skills. You can join Hari and me within an introduction to visual note taking or based on today's application, maybe how to make sketchnote videos or our latest course, digital sketchnoting. And keep in mind that anyone who has picked up a course or signs up for the verbal to visual community gets access to these free coaching calls that we're turning into podcast episodes. And since this is a brand new podcast, if you're enjoying what you're finding here, I'd love for you to share a rating and review on your podcasting app of choice. That will help other visual thinking enthusiasts make their way to this show and learn more from these stories and conversations. Thank you so much for listening. Good luck with whatever sketchnoting project you're working on right now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Till then.